Hi everyone, I just wanted to provide some um, class-wide feedback on the critical thinking rough drafts that you, or I guess first drafts, I'm sorry, that you turned in last week. Um, so here are some things that you can think about and work on in your uh, revisions this week. Uh, the first thing is to avoid shifting in person. Of course, there's first person, second person, and third person. So you want to make sure that you're consistent with that. In this first example, it says, I believe that the power of prayer is helpful in any tough situation you might come across. That's a shift from first to second. And this is probably the, the most common and the most problematic. If I could really teach you anything this semester, it's to take you out of your writing. It's a bit lazy and a bit informal and um, just a lower level of writing that I would than I would like to see. Um, so if you are wondering how you can improve your writing at this point, that would be an excellent place to start. Uh, and then it continues, people who don't use prayer are missing out on a great gift their Heavenly Father has given them. Uh, so that's, again, shifting from first to second and then to third. So when you write, you just want to make sure that you are consistent with what you're you know, the perspective that you're writing from. If you're writing a love letter, narration is absolutely appropriate. Um, in, in this essay, though, I would really recommend you keeping narration out of your essay. Try to be more objective. It's more challenging, but that's the whole point, especially with this unit. Um, be, be more objective and more critical in, in how you're delivering your message. And don't just state things as I... Uh, your opinion, which is the next element I have on this list. Don't present everything as your opinion in this paper. Uh, and it's really easy to fix because you may think, well, technically the ideas that I'm presenting are my opinion. Yes, that may be true. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you have to come out and say this is my opinion. So it's uh, subjective to say, in my opinion, prayer is the best way to feel close to my Heavenly Father. Or you could just simply take out that um, that phrase and say prayer is one of the best ways I feel close to my Heavenly Father. So it's not a big difference in terms of writing, but it's a big difference in terms of impact on your reader. If you present everything as your opinion, you know, what's your credibility? Who are you? Are you worthy of having an opinion? Uh, is your reader going to believe your opinion? Um, so that's why it's best if you really challenge yourself to, to keep your opinion out of your paper and try to write as objectively as you can and just state it more as a matter of fact as opposed to a matter of opinion. Keep working with your transitions. Um, a lot of you I know are really focusing on those and you're improving really well so I'm, I'm very very impressed with the work that you're doing there. Um, but they're hard to get the hang of and, and I fully acknowledge that. I've got two paragraphs here. Um, one without transitions and one with transitions. So um, take a look at this because I'll, I'll, I'll post this document um, online as well. So make sure that you um, read, read both and look at the different um, um, revisions, sorry, uh, the different revisions I've made and, and the difference that it makes because it's how easy it is. It's one word here, a little phrase here, a word here, a word here. They're not hard, but it really does make a big, big impact on your writing. So keep working with the transition. Um, let's see here. Make sure you have a really clear introduction. Don't state the question that you are answering from the assignment within your paper. Just give the information and the context that your reader needs to know regarding the topic. And then state um, your thesis statement, which is actually the answer to that question. So don't refer to this essay in any way. Again, this is, this is all about writing objectively and just write as if your reader has no idea that you're a student at BYU Idaho, has no idea what you're, you know, writing about and why you're writing it. Just present information and, and move on. Um, also make sure that your thesis is very clear and specific. Don't write it as a question. That's another area you can improve um, on your writing if you would like to um, step up your game a little bit at this point. Uh, don't don't use rhetorical questions in your in your writing. So if you, um, again, I think it's just kind of a lazy way of writing again. It's kind of like using the word you. Uh, so I hope you don't take that too harshly, but um, I really challenge you to um, improve the level of your writing. And that's another really good way. So be clear in your thesis statement. Don't um, refer to the question that you're answering and also don't state your thesis as a rhetorical question. 
So I've got a, an example of a vague thesis. I agree with the first question on the list. Most of your thesis statements are a lot better than this, but this is an example of referring back to the assignment and the questions that you're being asked, whereas a more specific thesis may say, money may not be the root of all evil, but it does have great potential to harm families and communities. If the love of money is the greatest focus, yes, I've got a spelling error. Whoops. I probably do it all the time. I just don't even notice. <laughs> uh, instead of working together and loving one another. So this is much more specific. It shows the question that I'm actually answering without posing that question. Because uh, doing so could just confuse your reader. So keep the question out. Just present your answer and enough context for your reader to know what you're doing. Also, um, in the past I've seen that some of your introductions are very lengthy which means that you are unfocused and you're just confusing your reader right off the bat. So make sure you only give enough information to set the, uh, excuse me, whew, I'm gonna yawn. Um, I did not get a lot of sleep last night, so I apologize. I've got a little, a little sick baby. Um, anyway, so just provide enough information so that your reader understands where you're going in your paper and what topic you're discussing, but don't do it too much. Don't give too much information, save that for the body of your essay. So it's, it's kind of like finding a balance. With your conclusion, make sure you restate your stance in some way. Of course, this is your thesis statement, so it just kind of, you start with the same idea that you end. Also, you want to make sure that you don't add new information. And make sure that the last, um, the last line of your, the last sentence of your paper ends with, with power in some way. It can be difficult to do that. It takes a lot of thought and creativity, but I promise it's totally worth the effort if you can end with a real bang at the end, um, especially with the topics that you're writing about. So I challenge you to, to, uh, to make that effort. Regarding your title, make sure that you always have a title for each of your essays. Don't state the question that you are answering in your paper as the title. And also don't write a complete sentence as your title um, because sometimes students will write a statement as their title and then the first paragraph or the first um, sentence in their introduction refers back to their title. Your title's not part of your paper. It's just um, a flag of, oh, here's what I'm talking about. So make it creative, make it engaging for your reader. It's their first impression of your paper. So if it's boring and blah, your reader's not going to want to read it. Okay, so just make sure you follow those, those simple rules about creating a title. Make sure that you acknowledge opposing viewpoints. Uh, this is a required element of the essay. It shows that you can have perspective and acknowledge that there are differing ideas about the topic you're writing about. It can be as simple as, although prayer is not the only essential gospel principle we are taught repeatedly, it is one of the most important in terms of having a personal relationship with Heavenly Father. That's how easy it is to acknowledge an opposing viewpoint. However, in this paper, uh, I would really suggest writing a separate paragraph just before your conclusion where you can acknowledge different viewpoints, but then of course tie it back to your topic and then move on, or your stance, excuse me, uh, and then move on to your conclusion. Because if you concede and not draw it back to your own um, stance, your reader's going to think that you're wishy-washy and confusing and unfocused. So you want to acknowledge those opposing viewpoints, but you always want to turn it back to your own stance and why your own stance is more correct or whatever it is. Okay. Uh, make sure that you are specific in your examples and details, and you also need to explain how you, uh, those examples and details support your thesis. Because without detail, your reader's going to be lost. Don't be vague. Don't be general. But get really, really specific um, in the details that you provide to prove your point. Um, also, if you don't explain those points, your reader will be left behind to wonder, well, what am I supposed to take from this? What, 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 what is she doing? Why, why did she include this? I guess I'm going to have to come to my own conclusion. You don't want your reader to do that. That's having them do all your work for you, and you don't want that because they may not be following your train of thought. So with every detail, every example, every quotation you use, make sure that there's an explanation that goes with it. Uh, sometimes it'll be a lengthy explanation, sometimes not. Uh, but make sure you follow up every piece of detail that you, or every, every piece of support 
uh, that you give with an explanation. And then kind of on that same topic, make sure you have a works cited page. If you are including outside um, sources, uh, a lot of what I saw was, you know, scriptures, Book of Mormon, things like that. That's great. But you still need to put it in the works cited page. It's, it's a good habit to get into to avoid plagiarism. So I will post some things online to help you with that. So I hope this isn't overwhelming. It feels feels like it's quite a bit. But just, you know, go back, look through your essay, see what specific elements you need to work on. And then, you know, use this feedback to help guide that. Um, I hope you're, you're all doing well. I hope you're having a great week. And I hope you're enjoying this unit. Um, I really like it. So I hope you're enjoying it too. So just let me know if there's anything I can do to help.